And I say I want you, girl, I mean it. Lubbock Music Now is a project, Civic Lubbock, a number of businesses around the Lubbock area. The idea is that local West Texas songwriters and performers can present one of their songs uh, to possibly be included on a compilation CD that generally has between 15 and 20 different West Texas artists, all featuring one song from each artist. We have today, uh, right here on stage, the lovely Hannah Jackson, who's been on numerous Love Up Music Now CDs. So I will hand it to Hannah. Hi. Thanks, Carrie. I have several of these t-shirts now. They're my favorite. They always do a really good job of designing something cool and I always feel really cool when I'm wearing it around town. Like I earned it. It's neat because the back has the actual, all the names are on the back um, and, and the songs, I think. Yes, yes. So, it, um, yeah, I, let's see, the first year was what, 2016? Mm hmm. 2016. And I submitted a song with um, a student that we had co written called Settle Down, I believe was the first one, maybe. Or I don't remember, but um, and it was such an exciting experience to have the city, Civic Lubbock, get excited about a song that I had written and I had recorded. And it provided and every song that's been on there, it has provided an audience that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And um, even they I think they sold it at the um, Buddy Holly Museum before. And when they did that, I had people DMing me from England and saying, I love your song, Rare Flower, and it's so good, and it really spoke to me, and I played it for my wife, and she loves it too. This is incredible for me, because otherwise, I don't think they would have, have ever heard my song, Rare Flower, and it it resonated with them, and um, that was really special to me. Um, it's great because you get paid. It's awesome, um, and that is very helpful as, as a musician to get that little coin. And it just feels like a big, warm hug that um, the community likes your music and chooses you. And um, it being, uh, uh, and I'm sure you can talk more about this, about who chooses the, the song, but it being um, such high caliber people, to be able to feel like you impressed them with your music and your art and something that I put a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, money into um, producing, getting produced, and putting it out there like, here's my baby. Do you like my baby? <laughs> Is it cute? <laughs> and then they say, yes, we like your baby. It's cute. We'll put it on the record. It's just such a good feeling. And it has just really encouraged me to keep going as a musician um, and has just been a beautiful experience for me. So, yeah. And I love my wardrobe of shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, um, so speaking of the shirts... Uh, one of the unique aspects among many aspects that we have about the project is that Dirk Fowler, uh, a, a internationally known uh, graphic designer who is also uh, an instructor in our School of Art, designs the artwork for us. And he does that by listening. He, he only does the art after the songs have been chosen, and he will listen to the songs, and then he will come in and present the committee if we're lucky, uh, three, uh, if we're not, more, because it's impossible to choose. So every single art, uh, or I'm sorry, every single CD features original art by a world-renowned artist. And what, the way I like to describe this project is all about local music and musicians, right? Our sole purpose, we don't really have for this particular project, is selecting, uh, helping artists uh, get more exposure. And yes, one of our, we look at our listening patterns on Spotify and iTunes and Amazon, and we have a worldwide audience, which is really amazing. Uh, now with streaming, um, you know, the fact that we have a, a physical CD is something that the committee debates every year. Should we continue to have a CD? Most people don't even have CD players in their cars anymore. So, um, but we really get down in the weeds in terms of making sure that we are giving you guys the recognition that we think you deserve. Um, I'm not from uh, Lubbock. I'm a Kansas City girl, but I don't see any reason why we can't be Austin, you know, at some point. And um, that's just how I feel about it. 
So um, my the 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 folks on the committee are just wonderful. We come from different aspects, uh, different backgrounds, and um, the, I, I'm a poor substitute for Don Caldwell. He was supposed to speak on this panel originally, but I call him the Don because you can't say no to the Don. And Don Caldwell is is again. Uh, nationally known record producer, and he is just part of this community uh, and and just um, loves uh, local music and local musicians. And he is uh, wonderful to work with. Um, the way we, we select our songs, so we encourage everyone who has an original tune to submit it. Um, you know, we do need the production to be good uh, enough to go on the album because we don't really, although we master it, uh, it goes straight on the CD the way it's produced and handed off to us. Um, so then once we select from hopefully many entries, uh, we have a committee that um, has a, uh, what I call, I'm a professor, so I'm going to say the word rubric, which is basically just a scale um, of dimensions that we look at. And then we send it off to um, members of, former members and current members of the Texas Grammy Board, and they make the final selections. And it's always really so interesting to see what makes the final cut. And it it really is um, kind of a, a project. Every one of us on the committee serves out of love. We get nothing. Every single cent we raise. And let me just bend down here and show you some merchandise. We got these little guys. So um, a couple of years ago, Dirk Fowler um, sub submitted a prairie dog piece of art for us. And and we just thought it was the cutest thing, and our audience loves it. And so um, we have these for sale, and every every single dime that um, comes out of that uh, goes back in the project. Um, I work on uh, marketing for the project. That's my background. And we do things like press kits, which we send out to, um, I I'm not ashamed to, to Pester Texas Monthly, and, um, you know, among others, I've sent it to NPR, hoping that they might pick it up. Um, no luck yet, but I'm going to keep trying. So um, it just really is a labor of love um, from start to finish. So I'm lucky. I'm lucky. Yeah, absolutely. Advice to those, especially who are just now uh, considering uh, presenting one of their songs uh, for a consideration to be on the Love of Music now. Uh, your song has to be an original song. Uh, you can have someone else sing the song uh, that you wrote, or it can be a part of a band. Uh, several times, uh, entire bands have uh, been placed on the CD. Uh, having been a judge at one time uh, on the preliminary, on the local level, uh, one of the things that I noticed about many of the songs that were submitted, the quality of the recording was not good. The song was pretty good, actually, but uh, some of the songs, I could not distinguish the vocals. I could not understand what was being sung. Uh, that was one of the reasons that that particular song was not considered. And another uh, thing to keep in mind is, uh, generally there's about, you know, like saying anywhere between 15 and 20 songs chosen from probably close to at least a hundred submissions. I can I have been chosen uh, to be on several of the CDs, uh, both as a vocal and instrumental. I've also had several songs rejected. That's just the music business. You just every year you present the very best song that you have, uh, really well recorded. Uh, take the time to, I'll make sure that it is a good recording. Have professionals that you know listen to your recording and critique it because it's going to be gone over with a fine tooth comb by the judges. So make sure that you have a really good song, a really good recording. Uh, as a general rule, you want to keep it somewhere between three to four and a half minutes long. That's the average length of most of the songs. Uh, Get to your chorus quickly, make sure the recording is good, and uh, make sure that everything is precise. You know, you can't hand in a sloppily written song or a sloppily written recording. Okay, so a lot of people, they'll write their songs and they'll be really excited about their beautiful recording, but then they get kind of nervous about sharing it with the world. 
Can you share with us, Carrie, um, since you have the expertise in this area, about the mechanical license situation, about the royalties that we receive, and um, about once you write a song and it's your song, it's always your song? Can you explain that a little bit? Part of the criteria for you being accepted onto the Love Up Music Now CD is that you have to be a member of a performing rights organization. Uh, ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC. Uh, you don't have to have the song published, but you do have to be a member because you will receive uh, performance royalties from streaming as, as well as all the other different formats that the CD is produced on. Uh, you do have to have a, a, a member number. Uh, your song doesn't have to be copywritten. It is a good idea, but it doesn't have to be copywritten. I would suggest that you do especially if you're considered and to be one of the uh, songs on the CD. Uh, the sound recording is the best way for you to copyright the song. Uh, I deal with the music publishing seminar later in our Buffalo, Buffalo Grass uh, Festival this week, and we talk all about how you go about copywriting. But you do need to be a member of a performance rights organization. Uh, you will have to fill out a form uh, when you turn in your submission, and you have to, uh, to the best of your knowledge, uh, say that this song is totally mine. I didn't copy any parts of any other songs, and you cannot submit one of your original songs that has any kind of sampling from any other recording. But uh, uh, that's pretty much covers it right there. So with the PRO... What does that mean? Do I get money from them? How does that work, Carrie? A PRO is a performance rights organization. There are three major ones in America, Broadcast Music Incorporated, uh, American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, and the Southern European Stage Authors and Composers. Uh, they collect money, those three organizations collect money from radio and television, nightclubs, concert halls, any place that uses copywritten music, those organizations collect money from them, and then they pay a portion of that money to you, the songwriter. So if you're on the Lubbock Music Now CD and your song is streamed on Spotify, Spotify, uh, they will list which song it is, what performing rights organization owns the licensing for that, and every three months or so, you'll get some money. Yeah, and you'll be amazed. I mean, it's not a lot of money. I want to just let everybody know that when you get a song on iTunes or Spotify, you're not going to get rich, okay? It's not, because you get like point zero 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 one something like that. Fifteen one thousandth of a cent for each play that you get on Spotify and or Pandora YouTube, all the other basic streaming services. Right, right, right. So 0% of zero is still what? Zero. So if you don't play, you can't get paid. So it's worth it because this is an audience that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So I'm not concerned about the royalties, but I think a lot of people think, well, that's my song. I don't want them making money off of my song. No, 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 no. They're doing it all very legit. It is a great opportunity. Um, you get paid $200 for to to have your song go on the on the record, a record that you would never be on otherwise. Um, you get an audience bigger than you would have had otherwise. You get to collect royalties. You still own the song. Once you write the song, if you paid for that master, which means you paid to get into the studio to have it recorded, that was your coin. You own that thing and you own it until you give it away to some publisher. And if they come and knock on the door and they want it, that's pretty cool. So negotiate. But it's still your song forevermore. Um, and some people don't even know this, that if somebody else covers your song, I think people think, well, what if they hear my song and start singing it at the blue light? That's going to make me mad. Well, no, because that's more people that are hearing your song. So, and also when it's your song, it's forever your song. You can have the biggest band in the United States record your song and get it to a number one on the charts. And you're still going to, you're going to make money from that, but you're also going to get to song your way um, for, sing your song your way forevermore. So 
nobody's trying to be sneaky or weird about this. They're taking care of making sure that it's legit. They don't want to get in trouble. So they, they know what's going on. And they have been so good to me. I've done this for six years and they have been wonderful. It has been a huge, incredible opportunity. And I'm just so grateful. But I wanted to just get that out there because I think some people just don't know. They, they don't understand. Music business is weird and it changes all the time. Um, and it, it can be very scary when it's something that you have worked so hard on and that you have your heart into to share it with others or to be afraid of what could happen to it. So you're safe. I can attest to that. Do you want to say? Um, yeah, let me talk about, um, but those are great points. Uh, let me talk a little bit about a recent addition to our little lineup, and that is the TV show that um, uh, Don Caldwell also produces, where we have the performers on camera, uh, on a professional stage, um, uh, professionally mastered. It is wonderful. And we're in our Th- correct me if I'm wrong, uh, second year, third year of recording. Have you guys done your spots yet? Yes? Okay, so um, what an amazing opportunity. So you not only go, uh, get to be on the CD, you can be on the television as well. And then we uh, produce that, in, we, we um, miniaturize those uh, bits into songs, and we will use those on our social media channels. And also just to, to encourage you to go to Spotify or go to your favorite streaming service and look for Lubbock Music Now albums. All of them are up there. All of them are digitized. Uh, you can locate us on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we have a young, eager intern who has been revolutionizing our our social media presence, and um, we love to collaborate. I mean, we really feel like this is a collaboration between the artists and the the um, project and um, that that's just the name of the game. We love it when we can ask Hannah to come out and perform or at a, you know, when we do our press conferences and Carrie has come on the student radio station with me. So that's just so wonderful that we can um, call on you guys and, and have you come out and represent. What haven't I talked about? So uh, the annual submissions, um, we will post that on all of our social media channels. Our submissions are open now, and you can go to our website. Uh, if you'll just Google Lubbock Music Now, and you can download um, all of the details uh, about how to submit. Um, we do have to have it packaged so that it can go in a Dropbox, but we have a, a pretty big Dropbox. Um, from the from the the other side of that, how how would you talk about that um, process? Is it is it pretty easy and straightforward? Okay. All right, so that's what we are hoping for. And then um, once the SOG submissions are closed, then we will gather and listen, have a listening party, and we will, um, again, do our little secret ballots, and um, we'll tally up. My job is usually to tally up the votes, and we determine then who makes the cut, and then we send that off to the Gra- the Texas Grammy uh, uh, professionals, and then they will, will get back with us on the final the final lineup, and then we kick in our PR machine. Uh, we begin to uh, distribute press releases. We will generally have a press conference. We love to go over to the Buddy Holly Center. Um, that's a really uh, fun venue for us. And um, then we will begin to promote it, and we try to place those CDs anywhere we can beg, borrow, or steal. Will you please let us put up a little display? Um, you can usually find, find them at the Buddy Holly Center. Uh, sometimes we can get them on Texas Tech campus, um, but you can always buy them at Select a Seat as well. And every, like I said, every dime that doesn't go toward production and direct cost goes back into the program and paying the artists. And the other um, thing I didn't mention, and um, have you both been to the airport? For I know Carrie has. Uh, so we have partnered with the the airport. And on Friday afternoons, um, we have, we pay our artists and, you know, it's a volunteer situation, but we will send them up uh, to entertain those waiting on the Vegas flight or an afternoon flight somewhere. And so we get, we, we get you uh, plugged into, to that new set of ears, perhaps, and people are just sitting around and, and you get to entertain them there. So every place we can possibly promote our artists we definitely, we definitely do that. So we're always open to ideas. All right, what what have what have we left off? One of the many benefits is that 
if your song is chosen, you get a video uh, that is part of uh, being on the Lubbock Music Now. You do sign a contract with Lubbock Music Now and Civic Lubbock uh, to grant them rights to use your song on the CD and on the television and radio broadcast. But you can also have access to the video of your song that you can put up on YouTube. I've already started getting hits from mine. And probably one of the greatest things about being on the Lubbock Music Now CD each year is the other artists that are on the CD. I get to say, I am on the same CD as Hannah Jackson. Silly. You're so silly. Okay, so the the TV show thing is huge. It's excellent. And I can tell when they're playing it, y'all. Because when I go to the grocery store, people look at me weird. <laughs> they're like, wait a minute. I feel like, yeah, exactly. That's too good. <laughs> right. So I, I, that's when I know, oh, they're, they're playing that thing because people are looking at me strange. I'm just here for carrots. It's fine. Um, so, and that's great. And, and, and that's exposure that we wouldn't have otherwise. And also it connects us to the network. So while we're sitting in there waiting for our turn to go with the filming, there's another artist there that's going before you that has a song on there and there's one after you. And so we all just kind of hang out and, and get to be around each other. It's tricky um, in this industry because, you know, we have families and we have day jobs and we have all this stuff going on and, and we can't go to everybody's shows and gigs. We're supportive of each other. We're just so busy and we then we have our show. And so um, this is an opportunity to really bring us all together and unify us in a way that otherwise we wouldn't have. You know, we'd, we would maybe get to a show and what that does, I think, um, even though this can feel a little competitive, I guess. I think it kind of breaks some of that down and it puts us together and and lets us um, all work towards the same goal of making music, making really good, professional, beautiful music out of Lubbock, Texas, which was intended to be Austin originally, I'd like to say, and had, well, the the day the music died, I, I'd like to say that the music never died in Lubbock, Texas. And so we carried on just for Buddy. And it would have been, I really believe that it would have been Austin. Um, and it is growing. It's growing all the time. But timing is everything in our lives. And I think it is the perfect time for us to come together and be unified in our music and what we make and make the world a better place with it. And that's what this project does. And I am so honored to get to be a part of it anytime that I can. So thank you for all your work. Thank you. The music community is open to anyone with an original song. On the Music Now CDs, you will hear country, alternative, hip-hop, rap, jazz, instrumentals, gospel, uh, praise and worship music, all genres. And the best thing is, when you win, you get five copies to give to your mama. Actually, you get ten copies, five you can give to your mama. And they let you sell them at your gigs. So that's really cool, too. That's a little extra coin. Man, you could sell those things for $50 if you thought you could get it. <laughs> but they're cool with that. They give, you, they give you those and say, do what you will. Sell them. So, yeah, that's, that's great. That's really good. Anything else you want to say? I think we covered it. You want to wrap it up, Katie? Just send the, you know, if the house song or even a question, let us know. Yes. If you have questions, you can go to Love Oak Music Now Facebook page. Or Civic Lubbock, you can find it anywhere. Uh, you're encouraged to write your best song and get it recorded well and send it in. And uh, we will be glad to have you as part of Lubbock Music Now CD. Lisa Lowe, Hannah Jackson, Carrie Banks, thank you for tuning in. We hope to see you on the electric TV and on the Lubbock Music Now CD. 